In the feature segment today, you'll meet Leanne Hines of Greenwood, Mississippi. She contracted West Nile virus in 2007. Despite some continuing paralysis, she hasn't let it stop her. She's learned new ways to do old activities. Mississippi State University's AgriAbility program has worked with her so she can operate her tractor once again with her present physical abilities. Farm Week's Amy Taylor first brought us this story a year ago. Leanne Hines of Greenwood, Mississippi says it's still unbelievable that a virus from one tiny mosquito could have such a huge impact on her life. In August of 2007, Hines was infected with West Nile virus, an illness in which symptoms commonly range from headaches to body aches to high fever. More severe symptoms can include muscle weakness, tremors, and even paralysis. Unfortunately, Hines' condition was the worst case scenario. I knew things were really bad when my husband walked in and said, did you have the polio vaccine? And of course I said, sure, you know, when we were kids, we had it on the sugar cube. So um, this virus had um, taken the course that polio mellitus does. It's asymmetrical. It had totally paralyzed my left side. And by that evening, I was uh, barely breathing. Initially, Hines was told she could be back on her feet in a month's time. But after more than a year, she still lives with the paralysis. However, Hines claims she's fortunate to have what she calls a strong constitution and giving up on making a recovery just isn't an option. With constant exercise and physical therapy, she has managed to get her upper body moving again. Before the virus, Hines competed in equestrian events and taught riding lessons. She says she plans to get back to that routine and has even picked up a new hobby while on the road to recovery. I was looking for ways to, um, you know, to be outside, to keep on doing the things I love to do. So the earth box was a perfect way for me to be able to garden um, before I get back to doing all my other activities. Hines claims that having a farm background has been instrumental in her recovery because it taught her that she can stay productive by finding new ways to get things done. You know, that's the nice thing about having a farm background. Farmers usually are able to come up with ways of getting done what they need to do and I think that helped me more than anything because you know out on the farm you know if, if you don't have a certain tool or you don't have exactly the right kind of thing usually you can figure out a way to get it done and um, the agribility people are working on that too. They're, they're working on ways to help me do what I want to do. The agribility program helps people with disabilities who work in agriculture to continue their way of life. Agribility is a partnership between Mississippi State University Extension Service, MSU's TK Martin Center for Technology and Disability, the Mississippi Department of Rehabilitation Services Vocational Rehabilitation Division, the Alcorn State University Extension Service Program, and the Methodist Orthotics and Prosthetics Lab. According to Herb Wilcutt, MSU Extension Ag Engineer, the program serves as a link between rehabilitation and agriculture. We come up with solutions that are not available to vocational rehab on the shelf type items. Sometimes construct items as needed and uh, wind up uh, hopefully with the best fit for the client that's in agriculture. A tractor is currently being designed that Heinz can operate herself. We've equipped a uh, small tractor with a, two different lifts for demonstration purposes. One here on my left is a standing platform lift that uh, would be able to get her from ground level up onto the operator's platform level. Uh, by the push of a button. Would help her to get on her tractor and operate it uh, mowing pastures, uh, also provide some extra rough terrain mobility that she don't have in a wheelchair by accessing the tractor and then going where she likes. Uh, may also, if we go the ramp route, be an, an option for her to work with her riding lessons that uh, she teaches. Hines claims she looks forward to attending a national training workshop with AgriAbility, which will help her connect with other farmers and ranchers who have disabilities. I'm going to the national training workshop with AgriAbility. They, I was able to get a scholarship to go to that, and that's in Wichita, Kansas. Um, that way I'll get to meet with other farmers and ranchers. Um, and we're actually going to, you know, get together and brainstorm about ways that we can promote agribility and help other people with disabilities who want to get back to ranching or farming. Besides learning new ways to operate on the farm and finding a new level of patience in the process, Hines testifies there is another valuable lesson that stresses the importance of protecting yourself from West Nile virus. Prevention is, is the key. Uh, 
always wear insect repellent with DEET. Don't go out during prime feeding times, which is sun up and at sunset. Uh, empty anything that would hold water, even a dog dish that's not uh, cleaned can hold water that mosquito larvae can live in. The mosquitoes that usually carry the West Nile virus are the smaller house mosquitoes. They're the ones that, you're gonna, that are going to be at your back door, the ones that are going to be in your flower beds, in the tall grass. So um, those are the ones you need to watch out. That's where you need to be most vigilant. Hines says it's important to remember that smaller mosquitoes are the possible vectors of West Nile virus, not the larger ones with stripes. As Hines continues to recover, she says she also learned about the power of support from family and friends. They have all been supportive. They, you know, I'm, I'm back to doing a lot of things I was before. A lot of people have been praying for me, and that shows that they have hope that I was going to get better too. And. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just going to take time. I, I, the most important thing I've learned through this is to have a little patience. <laughs> Hines claims an adopted companion has also played a significant role in her recovery. This is my dog who rescued me. He's, he's uh, given me a lot of companionship. He came from the Humane Shelter. His name is CD for Companion Dog. And uh, he's, you know, but... But just, you know, having the dog, it gave me something to get up and feed every morning and go see about him. And he loves to chase the ball, so that, that got my right arm back to where I could throw. Now that she knows it's possible to live a full life despite her circumstances, Heinz can provide words of encouragement to those who struggle with disabilities. Try to um, get to your optimum. Uh, there, there are a lot of things you can do. I volunteered to be a reader for the extension reading program here in uh, Greenwood. Um, you know, I'm, uh, just get out there, volunteer. There are plenty of things that you can do. And if there are not things you can do getting out of your house, you know, there are plenty of things. I, gosh, I've made cookies for the football team cook my spaghetti. I've cooked for the youth group a couple of times. They're, they're just, you know, there are a lot of things you can do. Don't give up. Throughout this experience, Hines has become thankful for each day during the journey to recovery. She claims that her positive attitude, determination, and farm background have been instrumental in surviving West Nile virus. Hines says she constantly strives to reach a new optimum as she works toward restoring her health, and she looks forward to getting back to her old routines in the future. From Greenwood, Mississippi, I'm Amy Taylor reporting. And you can watch this story again on our FarmWeek website at farmweek.msucares.com. We'll also have the contact information for the Mississippi AgriAbility Program if you know of someone who might could benefit from it. Layton uh, got a note uh, from Ms. Hines. Uh, unfortunately, she's found out that some of her paralysis is going to be permanent. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's still teaching her writing lessons and doing many things. And one of the things she said, and I get this right, that her, she's found that, you know, our happiness is dependent on how we embrace change. So she continues to be positive as she goes forth rebuilding yeah. her life. 